welcome again in this segment we will start our discussion on how to develop a production plan there are three basic strategies uh, that we can choose from there is production leveling strategy or level strategy for short chase strategy and hybrid strategy in this segment we will focus on production leveling strategy and in the subsequent segments we will discuss chase strategy and hybrid strategy just as a recall we are now focused primarily on this part of s and op grid so that is related to production because we have already discussed in one of our modules uh, how forecast is made and we discuss different methods of forecasting and some calculations related to forecasting and these calculations related to finished goods inventory uh, depend upon the calculations related to production and sales uh, we have briefly seen these uh, calculations in one of the previous segments as well so we will focus primarily on from where do these values come and just remember that once we discussed uh, s and op process uh, we saw there that uh, uh, there is a supply planning and there is a demand planning so we are basically talking about the supply planning so from uh, how much can we produce and then we of course match both these uh, supply plan and demand plan and then there is a final s and op or sales and operations plan so this is an important input to s and op process the operations plan or production plan the same applies to make to order grid as well so again we have discussed different methods of forecasting so we will be focusing on uh, production or shipment so how this production or shipment plan is made from where do these values come and, and again that is a very important input to s and op process and once we have these two uh, values i mean related to bookings and production we can make calculations for backlog that we discussed in the uh, previous segment so first production leveling strategy so as the name implies uh, we are continually producing an amount equal to average demand average forecast demand practically sometimes the demand will be less than this uh, amount and we will be having some inventory uh, to be built up and at other times demand might be greater and inventory is used up uh, we will see some some details of uh, this strategy in in the following slide so what is the basic benefit or advantage of this strategy strategy so there are a few advantages one of them is that uh, this strategy results in a smooth level of uh, operation so that avoid the cost of changing production levels so we have set up an average uh, uh, level of the of the production a level of the production that depends upon the average demand or average forecast so we don't need to change that Uh, that level because that also costs you so we will see that in, in the chase strategy because that is actually a disadvantage of chase strategy because we have to change the production levels there second advantage is that you need uh, you, you don't need to have excess capacity to meet peak demand and finally you you don't need to hire and train workers and lay them off in slack periods so you have a constant level of production so you can calculate and maintain a certain capacity with respect to machinery as well as uh, workers so apart from routine hiring and firing you don't need massive hiring and firing in this case the main disadvantage of this strategy is that inventory is built up during low demand periods so you have to Uh, bear inventory carrying cost uh, you have to have uh, your uh, warehouses accordingly and you have to have some arrangements to to keep that inventory 
safe unless that is sold out. So just as an illustration, uh, you can see that demand is varying from time to time. So we calculate an average value and we set our production according to that average value. So in this illustrative graph, you can see that for the first six months, demand is less than the production. So inventory will build up. So this shaded area is showing the inventory that is built up. Uh, during rest of the year, in this case, uh, we, are, uh, we are having production level that is less than the demand. So demand is greater than the production. So inventory that was built up here is actually used here. So this is the basic idea that we are producing more during off peak seasons or when the demand is less and then you use that extra inventory when the demand increases. So how we can set up this level, this, this average level of production? How we can set up this value? So there is a simple formula that you can use. So production for each period, that is the average production is equal to total forecast for that planning horizon. So in this case, that is equal to one year. So what is the total forecast for that year? minus opening inventory that is uh, before the planning horizon that you're carrying before the planning horizon from the previous year in this case plus ending inventory if you want to carry some inventory from this planning horizon to the next planning horizon if there is some amount regarding that you can add that so total forecast minus opening inventory plus ending inventory divided by number of periods. So in this case, we are talking about a year. So number of periods will be 12, 12 months. So that will give you a value that, can, that you can use as a, as a baseline. Just keep in uh, mind one point that we will reiterate again, that once you have made this plan, that is not something fixed. So this is done on the basis of a rolling horizon. So you keep on updating this plan, but that gives you a baseline on which you can plan your production, inventory, capacity, and related uh, things. Uh, but uh, the changes that you, you make in this plan should be in accordance with the, uh, with the annual plan that you made. So this is something that we discussed during our discussion on and uh, during our discussion on um, S&OP process and we will again discuss this point once we discuss master production scaling. So there is a question, I recall from module one, for what type of products is production leveling strategy more appropriate? So this strategy is more appropriate for make to stock production environment where we are focusing on the production of standardized or functional products. Second question is what could be the possible pros and cons if the production leveling strategy is used for seasonal demand. So this is something that we saw graphically that uh, during off peak season, you are producing more and during peak season, you are using that inventory, but practically it may still not meet the demand during the peak seasons. So practical answer to this question is uh, to use hybrid approach because if you use level strategies for seasonal demand uh, you may not be able to meet demand using the inventory from the slag periods uh, for for the demand during the peak season so practical answer is to use hybrid strategy so now let's solve an example the following is the forecast for a product family for the next six months. The company has to make a production plan for these months. There are 30 items in inventory from previous periods production. So from the previous planning horizon, we are having an inventory of 30 items. On average, how much should the company produce each month to level production? Also calculate end of period inventory for, for each period. What will be the planned invent ending inventory? The company wants to have 100 units available at the end of planning horizon. 
So you want to carry an inventory of 100 units to the next planning horizon uh, to act as buffer inventory for the next month. So as we have already discussed that planned ending inventory is equal to planned ending inventory of the previous month plus planned production for this month minus four cars for, for this month. So this is the data that we have for this question. So for, we have a four cars for, for six months in this case. So first we need to add these, these values. So total forecasts for the six months will turn out to be some of these six values. So that is 7,600 units. So average value that we will need for uh, for monthly production will be equal to this 7600 minus this 30 that we have from previous planning horizon plus 100 units that we want to have at the end of this planning horizon divided by number of periods so that is equal to 6. So that will turn out to be uh, 1278 approximately. So that will be our uh, level of production for each month, 1,278. Secondly, we need to calculate the ending inventory. So as we saw ending inventory for January in this case will be equal to previous periods inventory plus pr plan production for January minus forecast for January. So for January, ending inventory for January will be equal to previous periods ending inventory plus planned production. So this is what we will have on hand. So 30 plus uh, 1278 minus what we have to deliver. So that is 1000. So that will be 308. I repeat that we are talking about planned ending inventory. So this is something that we want to, uh, this is something that we are planning to have at the end of each month. Similarly, uh, so this has turned out to be 308. Similarly for February, the ending inventory will be equal to ending inventory for January, that is 308, plus planned production for uh, uh, February, so that is again 1278 minus forecast for February, that is 1200. So that will turn out to be approximately uh, 386. So we can carry on in the same manner to calculate the ending inventory for March, April, May, and June, or for a period 3, 4, 5. And six. So these are the values that we, we come up with. So ending inventory, planned ending inventory for March will be equal to ending inventory for, for February plus planned production for March minus forecast for, for March. So uh, 386 plus 1278 minus 1150. So 514. So this 514, similarly for April, that will be equal to 514 plus 1278 minus 1250, that will be 542. And similarly for, for May and June. So ending inventory, planned ending inventory for June is 98. So we are not getting exactly 100 because of approximation, uh, but that is something that we plan to have. We, we plan to have 100 units at the end of the planning horizon so we are having that uh, uh, quantity approximately equal to 100 units by the end of the planning horizon, that is uh, by the end of June in this case. So we can carry this inventory uh, to the next planning uh, horizon. Uh, we can convert this ending inventory to the uh, ending inventory in terms of number of days as we discussed uh, in our MTS grid so how much inventory we have on hand, so in terms of number of days. 
Similarly, if we have uh, some data on the inventory carrying cost, we can also find the inventory carrying cost for this planning horizon. Thirdly, if we have some, some data related to the size of the product or its, or its packing, we can also approximate uh, the area that will be required to, to store these items. For example, the maximum inventory that we are, uh, we are carrying, uh, we actually plan to carry is 542 units, approximately uh, 550 units. So we can uh, approximate uh, the area that will be required to store these items. Uh, similarly, we, we are having a plan to produce 1,278 units every month, approximately 1,300 units. So if we have some data available uh, with respect to the time required to produce one item, uh, we can actually calculate the resources required. For example, if it is a labor intensive process, we can calculate how many workers will be required on average every month or how much equipment or machinery will be required. So all these things, all these calculations, for example, related to, to machines. So let me write here. So all these calculations related to, uh, to machines, uh, labor, and space and other resources is what is called a resource planning. So that is an integral part of, uh, of making a production plan. So we will see at the end of our discussion on different production strategies, level chase and hybrid strategy, uh, how we can actually uh, match up our plan, our production plan, the resource planning and uh, what aspects are required with respect to resource planning. I mean, we have to plan for machinery, labor, space, and some other, uh, uh, other aspects related to resources and capacity. But that is very important to be considered whenever we are making a plan. So we have to consider resources and capacity that will be required to, to execute that plan. So in the next segment, we will discuss the chase production strategy. Thank you very much.